Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about cryptography and introduce the main terms, ideas, and uh, systems that it uses. Um, I'm also going to talk about a little bit of when, but more of the why we use certain systems in certain cases. So, to start with, we have these three terms. We have cryptology, cryptography, and cryptoanalysis, which are very often used interchangeably. However, strictly speaking, cryptology is an um, encompassing term that refers to either cryptography or cryptoanalysis. Now, cryptography is the designing of ciphers, creating them um, to be secure, to do whatever you need them to do. Cryptoanalysis is the breaking of ciphers, specifically. You're taking a cipher that somebody else designed and you're trying to crack it. Now, cryptography has um, two main systems. It's broken up into two major ideas. It has symmetric systems and it has public key systems. Now, before we can talk about those, we have to sort of outline some of the main characters that are used um, to define these ideas. Now, if we get on here at the bottom, we have our character Alice. Now Alice wants to send a message. So what she has is she has an encryption key. So Alice has an encryption key and she encrypts the message. So she turns her message into something nobody else can read theoretically. Now the message then goes over and it gets decrypted um, by the decryption key by Bob, who can then read the message. So the message starts with Alice, goes over and gets encrypted by Alice, who sends it to Bob, who uses the decryption key to decrypt the message. Now, Eve is the person um, who intercepts the message. Eve is the person who wants to read the message, even though nobody else wants her to. Um, these three names are the names that are classically used for this uh, for these cases. So now we can go back to looking at our symmetric and our public keys, which remember are the two main types of designing ciphers of cryptography. Let's start with symmetric. Now symmetric keys are typically used, they, well I should say they were typically used prior to the 1970s. These, um, so these were used all throughout history up until the 1970s, and yes, that does have a correlation with computers. But um, the, main, the main thing that you need to know about these systems is that the encryption key that we see here and the decryption key are the same thing. So it's very important to note that you use the same system to encrypt as you do to decrypt. Now, the problem with symmetric systems is that in order for all parties to understand and be able to read the message, everybody has to have the key. So everybody has to have the key. So think historically. That means that, um, especially in the days before electronic communication, that you had to meet prior to actually sending messages using the system. Um, you had to meet and agree what you would use as your key uh, so that you could both encrypt and decrypt so that you would be able to send messages back and forth without Eve, the person intercepting in the middle, being able to read it. Now, having to meet beforehand is kind of a major hassle, especially when you think about historically, um, if you're thinking about battlegrounds or something like that, they're not going to be close together very likely and having to get together over all that distance when you're in the middle of a war is not ideal. Um, it did have to be done however and yeah that's a bit of a hassle. So nowadays we have what's called a public key system which overcomes that problem of having to meet beforehand. Now, public key systems are very interesting. They allow us to um, a, not have to meet beforehand. So let me show you how that would work. So if we have, we have, um, we have Alice who wants to send a message, right? Alice wants to send a message um, to Bob. 
So what Bob does, Bob designs a, a public key system in which there is, guess what, a public key. And yes, that is two words. A public key, but there's also a private key. So he puts out the public key to anybody who needs to read it. Anybody wants to send me a message? Bye, Bob. He, he says, anybody who wants to send me a message can use my public key to send me a message. So, what Alice does, she uses, uses Bob's public key. Okay, so Alice uses Bob's public key to encrypt the data. So she takes her message and she makes it not readable by anybody else. Um using the key that Bob gave her. And then she sends that message that has been encrypted to Bob. Now Bob also has his own private key. Now the private key is the only way, in most cases, theoretically, it's the only way to interpret Alice's uh, message. You can't use the public key to understand the message. You can only use it to de- you can only use it to encrypt, excuse me, not to decrypt. So, if Bob wants to say, uh, Bob says he wants to receive messages from people, um, but he doesn't want anybody else to read them, so he will design a system with a public key and a private key. He will share the public key um, to anybody who needs it. Therefore, it's not a secret. Therefore, you don't have to meet beforehand. It doesn't have to, um, the, the key itself doesn't have to be encrypted or anything like that. So you can just put that out there for anybody to use, and from there, anybody who wants to send Bob a message can encrypt it and send it to him. Um, but you have to have Bob's private key in order to be able to decrypt. Um, and that is basically how public keys work. That is what is more used these days, such as like RSA and LGAML and other um, highly secure systems on the computer use this. So that, like, password-protected sites, they'll use public key systems. Okay, a couple last things. Um, the difference between symmetric and public key in practice. Um, what we talked about was how it's theoretically used. Now this is how it's generally actually used. In practice, symmetric is used for large volumes of information. So something like if you're trying to send um, images for, if you're trying to send TV, uh, the data for TV is that's a lot of data. Um, symmetric is a much faster method. It takes a lot less work to um, encrypt and decrypt. Therefore, it's a lot more practical for that kind of thing. Public keys are usually used um, for short messages, very or very secure messages, um, or to share a common key. You could send. Uh, remember we talked about the problem earlier of having to meet up with the person to discuss the symmetric key? You could use a public key to encrypt your, um, your symmetric key so that nobody knows what your symmetric key is, but you never actually had to meet up with that person. Um, so you can use it for that kind of thing as well. So, symmetric, high volume, public is for more special circumstances when we're a little bit more concerned about the security. Um, another term that I want to go over, just because it's used so often in conjunction with um, cryptography, is the coding theory and the purpose of coding theory. The purpose of coding theory is to make sure a message was reliably sent in the first place. So if you're transmitting data over a very long distance, the message tends to degrade over distance, depending on what kind it is, obviously. But if you um, apply coding theory correctly, you can potentially make sure it gets there in better shape, if you will. It's also used for data recovery. So a good example would be a CD. CDs are coded so that even if you scratch them and lose some data, you can still recover it and listen to what was supposed to be on that spot of the CD. Um, so it can also be used, like it was used in sending pictures from outer space for a long time where 
we, by the time it gets from outer space to Earth, you've kind of lost a lot of data and it gets a lot, very jumbled. Um, so good coding theory can help us actually interpret the data and recover what it is we do eventually receive from, um, like the Mars mission and, um, taking pictures of planets from satellites and whatnot. Uh, so that is the purpose of coding theory. Cryptography is to, um, get it encrypted and decrypted. Coding theory is so that you can actually send the data so it can be useful. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Just post them in the comments below. Thanks.